Hi there, I'm Coach Kate Jones, and um, I've been meaning to do this video for a while because I feel the need to explain why it is I do what I do. And I don't think that everybody really knows um, why I became a personal trainer. And that's something that's important to me. So um, I brought the tissues <laughs> and I brought the water because I think um, this is going to take me a little bit because I'm going to go all the way back to um, about middle school, high school age and kind of go from the beginning. So bear with me. I know some of you um, think going back to those glory days isn't really important, but I think that's when it my journey actually started. So I'm going to go back there for just a little bit. So. When I was in middle school, high school, I started running cross country and um, it was awesome for me. It taught me discipline. I had some really, really great coaches that instilled in me some really great um, habits and some really great um, discipline. So I'm thankful for Coach Lamone and Coach Copenhaver in my middle school and high school days. Um, but when I reached a certain age, it was probably about 15 or 16, um, I started experimenting with cigarettes and alcohol and I never did any drugs for some reason. Don't ask me why. Um, that just didn't appeal to me. I thought I was above that for some reason. I, I don't know. Um, but I never did drugs. But um, yeah, uh, I, I didn't drink very often but when I did it was, it was a full on binge and we drank to get drunk back then. Of course we were young and stupid and and yeah, that's what everybody did. Um, but I started smoking pretty heavily when I turned 16 and um, did everything I could to hide it from my parents. You know, I'm sure that they knew, but, um, and I'm not really sure where that came from, whether it was my need to rebel. Um, you know, I was a really good student. Um, I was class president for a while. I got really good grades. I'm, I was pretty smart. You know, I never caused problems in class. Um, you know, the just uh, what other people would see from the outside as just a good kid. And I feel like my parents kind of uh, got the short end of the stick there because they knew what was really going on um, behind the scenes. So, um, so I started the drinking and the smoking and um, I'm not really sure why it started um, because I was a pretty decent athlete and I think I probably had the potential to go on to college if I wanted to. Um, I had the discipline definitely um, and the competitive nature. What I didn't have was um, the desire. I thought there were more important things. Um, I didn't really see, I wasn't ever really the best. So I guess I thought that I, I was never gonna be good enough. And I think that is where all of my anxiety stemmed from and why I started drinking so heavily was because I was never going to be the best and um, my father, God love him, uh, I love you dad if you watch this, this is not a, a slam at you but uh, it's actually a compliment because um, he taught me to always push to be the best and to always put my best foot forward and if I didn't give 100% then I really wasn't trying and uh, things like that have really, um, you know, stuck with me and to do what I say I'm going to do and, uh, you know, all those good things. But I think I, I got to a point where I felt like I wasn't good enough in anything and since I wasn't the best, then I wasn't worthy of love or I wasn't worthy of attention or I wasn't worthy of praise and that I, I, I fear started a cycle for me. So um, I started not trying. I started not caring. I started smoking. I started drinking and that led to um, you know some pretty bad relationships, some pretty um, tough times in my life. Uh, to make a long story short, I um, was engaged in high school and uh, pretty much ran that relationship into the ground because number one, I didn't know what I want and we were young, but number two, um, I I didn't like myself very much, so um, I feel like I, I slighted him and that wasn't fair. Um, and the same thing happened in college. I had a really great boyfriend then too, and uh, but still didn't like myself. So. Um, you know, until you learn to love yourself, there's really nobody that's that's truly going to be able to love you out of that. So um, after 
I broke up with my boyfriend in college, um, I, I started drinking pretty, pretty heavily. And one night I was partying at my brother's house, which is pretty funny because um, I could have just stayed there. And yeah, I would have gotten in trouble with my parents because I didn't make it home by curfew, but I was with my brother. So, you know, uh, it, it is what it is. But I decided to drive home and I struck a fire hydrant and wrecked my car. And uh, I passed out the wheel, by the way. Um, was fully unconscious and don't remember any of this. So um, I do remember coming to in the car. I remember panicking. I remember some guys pulling up and saying they knew where my brother was and they took me to his house and, and whatnot. And apparently then they called the police and um, that's when everything hit the fan. But um, so I got, I got a DUI and uh, several other charges with that. Thank God that nobody else was hurt. Nobody was hurt. Um, and that was, I would, I would tell you that that was my low point, but it wasn't. Um, it took me several years after that to realize that, um, you know, the choices that I made were my own. Um, I blame those guys that picked me up and called the cops for the longest time for the decisions that I made. And um, that wasn't the right thing to do. So, um, so yeah, I, I got a DUI. I spent the night in jail. And um, I'd like to tell you that it changed my life, but it didn't. I continued to drink, I continued to party. Um, I went to college and I was a cheerleader at JUCO and then went on to uh, you know, my four year university to complete my degree and I worked a ton. I lived a block and a half away from a bar which wasn't a good environment to be in and I generally didn't really have any um, true friends at that time to um, you know, connect with. And so I spent a lot of time drinking and a lot of time um, not doing much else. So um, I think my my turning point, my, my, my actual low point, um, I had gotten really, really drunk one night and started driving to Oklahoma to see a boy. And uh, I got pulled over and I thought, oh my God, my I'm gonna get another DUI. My life is ending. I, uh, you know, I can't, uh, you know, I'm not ever gonna be able to drive again, and this is gonna be terrible. And, uh, you know, and uh, the officer, for one reason or another, let me go. I told him I was super tired, and at that point, I, you know, I had been driving for about two and a half hours, and I honestly wasn't that drunk anymore, but I was still pretty drunk. And uh, he let me go. And um, when I got home from that, I kind of, when I had a chance to process it all, I was like, God saved me in that moment. And he gave me another chance. And I began to think about my life and what I had done with it. And I wasn't happy with who I was. And when I finally came to that conclusion, um, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a quitter. I'm not someone who shies away from a fight. So once I came to the point where I actually owned up to what I was and who I had become, it, it was a turning point. And not to say that I didn't, you know, have relapses and that I, ne I never drank again, or I would love to tell you that, but, um, that was a turning point for me. And in that turning point, I began to focus on my fitness and I started going to the gym every morning um, and I started uh, watching what I ate and I started um, researching that and I knew that I needed new friends. I knew I needed to meet a guy that would help me on my journey and so I uh, joined Christian Mingle and there I met my now husband, Tyler, whom I love very much and has supported me for a very long time. Um, so my journey with fitness kind of started this, what I call my snowball effect. And when I started respecting myself and I started wanting more for myself and I started feeling like that I deserved more for myself, um, you know, things just started to happen naturally like that. Um, I quit, I was working two jobs at the time um, that I was not happy in either of them and they weren't really going anywhere. So I, um, you know, I quit both of those and I found another job and when I realized that wasn't the place I wanted to be. I quit that job and, and jumped into the fitness industry. But, um, you know, it, it all stems from wanting more for yourself and knowing that you deserve it. And it took me a very long time to get to that point. Um, I, for a long time, I blamed 
myself. Well, no, I didn't blame myself. I blamed everybody else. I didn't take responsibility for where I was at in my life. I, I said that I never had any opportunities and that I never had enough money and this, that, and the other. I was from the wrong side of the tracks. I said that all the time. And really, it was just my own self getting in the way. My own thoughts, my own... Uh, I guess I was scared. I don't know. I don't know if I was scared of failure or um, if I just didn't want to try because... Hindsight being 2020, I know that if I had made so many different decisions that my life would have been way easier. I wouldn't be where I am today, which obviously is uh, an amazing, uh, you know, life that I have now, so I would never go back. But um, part of that is now I feel the need to share this with people and to share why I do what I do because I think that a lot of people um, you know, try to lose weight and try to get into fitness because they want a better body or they wanna look good or they wanna lose 25 pounds or whatever. But what most people don't understand is the principles that you learn in fitness can be applied to your, your everyday life. And uh, you know, working towards something for a really, really, really long time before you get results, like that's life. And everything that you do, guys, in a job, in relationships, and whatever it is you're doing, you have to work at something, and you have to do something, you have to work at it every single day to get what you want out of it, and that's fitness. Um, and, you know, things like that just uh, kind of hit home for me that um, once, I, once I started working on my fitness and once I started respecting myself and wanting more for myself, these other things just started happening. I started, you know, uh, having better relationships. I started wanting more for my, my career and professionally. And, you know, all of these things stemmed from me focusing on my fitness. So while I, I hesitate to tell people that, um, you know, working out isn't really about losing weight because I know that's a driving force with some people. Like, I want to lose weight. If I come to you, I expect results and results, results, results. But I feel like... Um, my path and my existence and my reason for doing what I do is very, very different from most trainers in that um, the workout is really irrelevant. It really is. You can go anywhere and get a good workout. What I want to work on with people and women especially is the mindset and why are you doing what you're doing? Is it from a good place? Is it from a positive place? Is it going to help you in the long run? Is it going to affect the rest of your life? Because this outer shell is nothing. It doesn't matter, okay? When we all die, we all go to the same place and we can't take anything with us. So all this crap that goes on on the outside, it doesn't really matter. What's happening on the inside is what really matters and how you impact others is what really matters. So through fitness, yes, I can care for others. I can, I can uh, you know, administer to others and I can show my love for others through... Um, you know what I do, but um, I think most people come to fitness through a uh, a negative way, and that's what I want to change. I want to I want women to work out because they love their body. I want women to um, you know just love themselves and know that if they respect themselves you know part of fitness and part of working out and part of being healthy and feeding your body properly is that you respect yourself it's not because you want to lose 20 pounds it's because i respect myself enough to eat well and you know once i learn all these principles and once i learn to respect myself then other people will respect me and once you get respect and you can stand up for yourself and what you believe in your world's gonna change. And you can start you know, living the life you always wanted and demanding that you deserve the things that you've always wanted. And, uh, and that being said, uh, you know, it's not all about what we want. I, I have very quickly come to realize over the past few months that um, life isn't about what I get, it's about what I give. And uh, what I do now I know that I change lives and I know that I help people and that brings with it a fulfillment that I've never I've never really experienced before so um, so that all being said I I want to encourage you to 
look inside yourself and ask yourself if you truly respect yourself, number one. But number two, what do you want out of life and what are you, what are you giving? Because um, if you take, take, take all the time and if you uh, blame other people for your circumstance and if you don't take uh, responsibility for what's going on and where you're at, then you're never going to move forward. So um, I encourage you all to do that. Coming from a person who has, I've been in the dumps, guys, and I think that most people don't don't realize when they look at me where I've been and what I've been through. And that's kind of why I wanted to share this video um, because I was, a, I was a pack a day smoker. I was a binge drinker. I, and you know, I still struggle with some things and uh, being authentic is very important to me because I feel like um, people don't relate to you and people don't understand why you do what you do unless they can relate to you. So, um, that's a lot of the reason why I wanted to share this because um, I feel like I just feel the need to connect more and more. And I hope that I was able to do this through this video. I still feel like I, I haven't been able to really clearly express what it means to me to be able to um, help people respect themselves more because that's my job. Um, or that's the way I, I, that's what I feel my job is. So, um, I've talked for 16 and a half minutes. I'm not sure what I've said, but I, I really hope that I have been able to share a little bit more insight with all of you on why it is I do what I do. And, um, if you would like to, you can share this because I want everybody to know why I do what I do. I want to change lives. I want to help people. I want to, I, especially women, I want to make women know that they, they deserve more and they deserve the best for themselves. So um, those, <laughs> those are my thoughts. Um, sorry they are so jumbled and crazy right now, but I had to get this out, number one, because I told my team that I would, and I'm, I'm true to my word always. Um, but number two, I've been... Uh, I've been hesitating on this and I don't know why I wish it was more eloquent and I wish it was uh, you know more grand but it is what it is and I hope you all um, take it for what it is which is me just just being me and I know most of you out there know me and uh, you love me anyway so I appreciate that and uh, I love you back so um, please comment below with any questions or, um, you know, thoughts that you have. I would love to hear from all of you. Thanks so much.